simple terms, headless to me means the ability to uh, run your CMS in a way that it's not generating the web pages directly. You're feeding that content out of the CMS via APIs and then you can choose what to do with that content. That could mean that you're using it in other channels or you're choosing a different rendering technology for your pages, but it's basically having a CMS that delivers just the content, not the web pages. An analogy might be, say, applying a new skin or something on a piece of software or on your, on your phone or something like that. So all the same things are going on in the background. You've still got all the same contacts, all the same apps and everything, but everything looks different on the front. Um, that's basically applying a different way of looking at it, but it's all the same data, all the same apps, all the same functionality behind the scenes. Some of the key advantages of uh, using a headless CMS in projects are that you get complete control. Uh, you get to choose exactly which tools you want to use um, and you get to implement them exactly how you want. You're not sort of uh, constrained by exactly how you're supposed to implement something in a headless CMS. However, the disadvantage to that is that you don't get those shortcuts sometimes. You don't get it all served up to you on a silver platter. So you could rephrase that as a disadvantage really, is uh, you have all that flexibility. So with that comes a lot of complexity. You have to fill a lot of gaps. You have to, uh, you have to provide a lot of the functionality that the headless CMS isn't giving you that a traditional CMS you might've taken for granted that you just got out of the box. To me, what that means, the hybrid means that it is uh, both. It is a traditional DXP at heart. So it gives you all of those benefits of having everything in one place and you not having to uh, fill any gaps, getting all those features out of the box. However, you also get most of the benefits of a headless CMS as well. You can deliver content in a headless fashion to extra channels. You can go purely APIs. You could even use it completely as a headless CMS, but the benefit there is that you get to choose, put your content in one place, and then you can choose to use it as a traditional DXP and also as a headless CMS. I think it really benefits certain companies that still want that traditional DXP feature set. So they still have primarily a website first focus. However, they also want the benefits of headless. So a typical example is someone who does have a, a website with important marketing features that they need, you know, personalization, optimization, testing, things like that. But they also have other channels such as a mobile website or other micro sites that they want to be able to use that same content and have their team managing their content in one place and that's primarily the website but they also have other channels that they want that same content to be consumed by. So one example um, could be a, uh, a membership focused organisation that has a lot of uh, customers that aren't just the general public, that's it's their members so they need to be able to know who's visiting the website they need to be able to personalize that content, provide gated content, they need to be able to track user journeys, but they want to be able to do that primarily through the website. But they also want to carry that experience through to a dedicated mobile app. And they want to be able to do things like um, event registrations and providing uh, valuable content to their members through the website and through the mobile app. But primarily website, secondarily mobile app, same content, same visitors. Key challenges we see people transitioning to a more headless approach are dealing with the expectations of their editors who might be really used to having a very visual, very sort of easy to use interface. Um, so obviously Experience by Kentico can help with that because it does have that interface. Um, it was designed from the ground up to be 
web as a first class channel, but also by putting all that content in a reusable content hub, you can take a step back from that web channel and then just start building out um, headless experiences with that exact same content. So they're not gonna get that initial shock of getting into a different platform that doesn't have the interface that they're used to. They'll get in and see the interface they're used to, and then the app developers will just have access to that content as well. When you do go headless, you do need to appreciate that you're sort of entering advanced mode in a way. Um, by going directly to the APIs, you get a lot of power, um, but you know, with that power comes that responsibility of having to think about a lot more, having to think more about uh, things like performance and security and integrations and all that stuff. So I would recommend making sure um, you have someone who knows what they're talking about on your side. Don't go lightly into a headless approach um, because uh, yeah, with that added flexibility comes significant complexity.